Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the annual Dick and Tunky Riley What Works South Carolina Awards Celebration. I'm Don Gordon. I'm the executive director of Furman University's Riley Institute, and I'm absolutely delighted to be with you as we join together for this virtual celebration of the excellent work that's being done across our state to support and enhance public education. Indeed, we should take every opportunity we can to celebrate our educators. I would like to give a special welcome to our three 2020 What Works South Carolina Award finalists. They are the Alternative Pathways to Education Certification, the Montevue Magic Initiative, and Spartanburg First Steps Quality Counts. Finalists, we are absolutely delighted to have you in the spotlight today and to celebrate your great work. The What Works South Carolina Award is presented in recognition of the legacy of our friend Dick Riley and is dedicated to the, to the work and memory of Ann Tunky Riley, a devoted teacher and passionate advocate of quality public education for all students across our state. As governor and first lady of South Carolina, Dick and Tunky Riley energetically supported teachers and students alike. Secretary Riley, we are Delighted that you're with us today virtually and appreciate so much of what you did for public education in South Carolina and what you continue to do for public education in our state and across the country. For everybody joining us today across the state of South Carolina and beyond, thank you for taking the time to be with us to celebrate our finalists and to celebrate public education. Finally, I want to offer our sincere and great appreciation to the organizations that not only work to support public education every day, but have also given financial support to today's award celebration. There are six organizations whose generosity has made it possible to give a $10,000 award to the winner and $1,000 awards to our finalists. They are the South Carolina Association of School Administrators, the South Carolina School Boards Association, the South Carolina Education Association, the South Carolina Education Oversight Committee, the South Carolina After School Alliance, and SCETV, who created today's videos that capture the value and the spirit of our program's finalists. Before I turn the program over to Kathy Stevens, I invite you to share your thoughts on social media throughout the program by using hashtag WhatWorksSC. That is hashtag WhatWorksSC. Kathy Stevens has been with the Riley Institute since 2005. In her time with the Institute, she's worn many hats and she's been very influential in moving the Institute forward during our two decades of existence. Currently, Kathy is the director of the What Works South Carolina Awards Clearinghouse. She's here to tell you a bit more about the three finalists. Kathy, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Don, and good afternoon, everyone. I join Don in extending a welcome to you all. It is wonderful to be online with y'all today celebrating South Carolina's public schools and public educators. I do so look forward to the day though when we can all be back together in person and hug. I sure miss hugging everyone. Um, I'd like to extend a special welcome to the legislators who are joining us today. Representative Rita Allison, Chair of the House Education and Public Works Committee, Representative Neil Collins, Senator Dwight Loftus, and Greenville City Council member Lillian Brock Fleming. Thank you all for taking the time to be with us and for your leadership in supporting public, public education in South Carolina. I'd also like to especially welcome the school superintendents who are here today. Burke Royster with Greenville County, Jarita Postlewaite with Charleston County, Gregory McCord with Marlboro County, and Baron Davis with Richland School District 2. Your leadership in guiding our school districts to offer quality education to our students, particularly during this complex and persistent pandemic is critical. So thank you very much for doing that. I have one more special welcome I'd like to extend to Ted Riley, one of Secretary Riley's sons, whose firm Riley, Pope and Laney joined recently as a sponsor of What Works South Carolina. So thank you, Ted. We are here today to recognize three outstanding effective programs that support public education in our state and to announce the winner of the 2020 What Works South Carolina Award. I wanted to share just a bit with all of you about how we selected these three programs to be finalists for this year's award. 
So each spring, the Riley Institute accepts applications for that year's What Works South Carolina Award. We accept them statewide from school and community-based education programs that are grounded in sound research and have collected local data demonstrating effectiveness. The Riley Institute's Center for Education Policy and Leadership team evaluates those applications using a rubric and narrows the pool to eight to 10 programs. The top programs are then sent to a confidential nonpartisan selection committee comprising five state and national education experts. This committee scores the programs based on the same rubric and determines the winner and two finalists. All three of the programs are added to the What Works South Carolina Clearinghouse on the Riley Institute's website. This clearinghouse is a web-based resource for educators, students, the community, and policymakers that identifies promising in-state initiatives and programs that are working for students in our state. The finalists um, and winning programs are also added to knowitall.org, an online resource for educators as part of the Riley Institute's partnership with South Carolina ETV. Okay, so that was a lot. If any of that did not make sense, uh, or if you have questions, please email me, Kathy Stevens, with any questions about the process and how to apply. And also, please be thinking about programs that should apply in the spring of 2021. Our application window will open in the middle of March. Each year, we like to recognize our past winners of this award, and this year is no different. We'd like to share with you a gallery of images highlighting each of our nine previous winners. There are no models or actors in these images. Each person you see has been a real participant in a What Works South Carolina award-winning program, and we are excited to celebrate their success along with each program success. Let's take a look. The Center for Educator Recruitment, Retention and Advancements, South Carolina Teaching Fellows. Clemson University's Reading Recovery Training Center. Chester Park Elementary School of Inquiry Project-Based Learning Initiative. Francis Marion University's Center of Excellence to Prepare Teachers of Children of Poverty. The Center for Educator Recruitment, Retention, and Advancements Teacher Cadet Program. Healing Species. Public Education Partners Make Summer Count. Prisma Health's Grow to Greatness, formerly known as Farm to Belly. The University of South Carolina's Carolina Teacher Induction Program. We are delighted to have representatives from these programs joining us this afternoon. Thank you to them and their leaders for continuing to do such great work in the state. Every year at this celebration, we at the Riley Institute cherish the opportunity to shine a bright light on all of the great things happening in South Carolina public education. Today, we are thrilled to tell you about this year's three finalists and share a video with you about each of them. It has been our absolute pleasure to work with SCE TV for all 10 years of this program to create videos about the outstanding hardworking finalists. And thank you so much to SCE TV for this meaningful partnership to celebrate public education. Our first finalist is the Alternative Pathways to Educator Certification Program, better known as the APEC program at Columbia College. The APEC program is an alternative teacher preparation and certification program that recruits, prepares, and promotes the retention of quality teachers in critical needs schools and districts in South Carolina. Join me in watching a video highlighting this wonderful program. have always been in education in one form or fashion or the other. That's where I really started to have that feeling that I wanted to do more and felt like I was capable of doing more if I had the right program to help me achieve my goals. Education can be very overwhelming, a very overwhelming institution, but I feel like the APEC program prepared me well for it. The APEC program is a South Carolina Center of Excellence that was awarded to Columbia College in June of 2018. APEC stands for Alternative Pathways to Educator Certification. And as the name states, it is an alternative certification program for working public school district personnel that are looking to complete their certification while also retaining employment with their school districts. It offers our critical needs school districts quality teachers and 
as we know, school systems are struggling in keeping teachers, there's a lot of attrition and people are leaving. I think that with the APEC program that we are working with APEC fellows who have worked in school systems for many numbers of years and so that the people that are coming to our program are committed to what they want to do. They really want to teach. They want to be there. The unique part of our program is that we provide the knowledge and the content and the pedagogical skills that are needed and help students become prepared to pass their licensure exams and be prepared to enter the classroom. And I think that's the most unique feature of our program and the one that makes it stand out in our state. And we're very proud of the fact that we stand beside and behind our participants to ensure that they are prepared and ready to enter the classroom as first year teachers. But I feel like APEC, it, it was a, they almost like with training wheels. They put you on the right path to success. And just when you, you know, think you got it, that two years is up. So now it's time to show and prove. And I can tell even in the weird, certain weird situation of the pandemic, I'm much more relaxed and confident. The confidence that Columbia College instills in their, in their APEC fellows is, is pretty awesome. So it's really awesome to be certified, to have been in education for so long in some form or the other and to now have the opportunities to grow and to do different things, try different things, it's just amazing. It's probably one of the best things I've done in my life. It allowed me to get back into school, attain my bachelor's. With that achievement, that, that gave me the confidence to pursue my master's. And I think it's put me in the right place to just help the next generation. Marla Sanders and Tracy West are the co-directors of APEC and Christine Bishop is the program manager. You see Tracy and Christine with me on the screen now. They are at Columbia College where they are celebrating with the college's president, past president, executive vice president, and provost. And look at that beautiful purple wall there. Uh, Tracy and Chris, will y'all give us a wave? Congratulations on being a 2020 What Works South Carolina finalist. Okay, our second finalist is Montevue Magic Initiative, which is a 21st century community learning center after school program at Montevue Elementary in Greenville. The program fosters social, emotional, and educational growth in students by equipping families with resources and knowledge that help them thrive. Let's take a look. I think as a principal, one of the things that you have to consider when uh, your school has programs like the Montevue Magic Initiative is direct impact on student achievement. And we are so proud to be a Title I school with one of the highest Hispanic populations in the state of South Carolina. And most would hear those data points and think, wow, I bet they have a lot of challenges, and we do. But we also have a lot to celebrate. We are the only Title I elementary school in Greenville County Schools that has earned and maintained an excellent rating on our school's report card issued by the State Department of Ed. Our teachers and our staff, like Janice Sargent, the director of MMI, are committed to defying the odds, and that is exactly what we've done over the last few years. The Montevue Magic Initiative is a grant-funded out-of-school time program, and a primary goal with the grant is academics, but also the program is designed to be holistic, to meet the needs of the students and the families within the school in all areas, in enrichment, health and wellness, all kinds of other programs that we offer to really reach the whole child. The magic in the Montevue Magic Initiative is because if you spend any time in and around the school, you realize that it's a very special place. The students, the families, the teacher, the entire staff, the community is very special. And the MAGIC actually stands for Making Academics Global, Innovative, and Constructive. So that is what we're trying to do through our program. 
I'm here in Greenville with no family. So finding out about the after school program and trying to jump on it early so that I can get her in was wonderful. Then recognizing all of the benefits that she would get from being in the program, being at a place where she could definitely take advantage of getting her homework completed, but also take advantage of some of the other programs that are offered from an extracurricular standpoint to um, just learning about special different topics, exposure to other kids. I think that helps when it comes to diversity. And then exposure to college students is definitely a plus for me. We have a partnership with the MMI program and we designed a um, curriculum to teach the children different health lessons. So the kind of the centerpiece of our partnership was bringing my college students into the school to teach these health lessons from the curriculum that they helped me develop for the children. I think one of the beauties of the Montague Magic Initiative is the 21st Century Community Learning Grant really works very well with Title I. We combine our funds to help support teaching positions to keep these services for our students and families. It really is a unique way that we can tailor our program to our individual students. We'll say making magic one student at a time, and that's so very true. If you start with the child in a family and you ignite that spark in them, well, that turns into a flame and it grows within that family and into the community. And that's really what makes the program so special is because if we want to make South Carolina better and stronger, it starts with our children and our families and our communities. And, you know, that's how we build up. We are so excited to have Janice Sargent, Director of the Montevue Magic Initiative, and Shannon Land, the Title I Instructional Facilitator at Montevue Elementary School with us online today to celebrate. They have gathered along with some of their colleagues at Montevue, and I think we can even see some of the children they serve behind them. Janice and Shannon, will y'all give us a wave? Congratulations on being a 2020 What Works South Carolina finalist. Our third finalist is Spartanburg First Steps Quality Counts. Quality Counts is a public-private partnership that works to create high-quality learning environments for our youngest citizens during early childhood and promotes best practices for teachers that help prepare students for success in school and life. Let's watch a video about this special program. And let's see, what else we have? What about a snake? Both state and local data confirmed that our children were arriving at kindergarten without the necessary skills for success. Those skills were not only academic, but included critical thinking and social and emotional well-being. Using nationally recognized standards and assessment tools, Quality Count's goal is to create high quality learning environments and to improve teacher practice all in a play-based model that includes inquiry-based learning and social and emotional development. The Quality Accounts model provides an individualized continuous quality improvement cycle for early care and education. Quality Accounts operates on five nationally researched based standards that show quality and benefits for all children. Early learning is the foundation for continued success. Quality Counts, the professional development that they have provided to our teachers to enhance their craft, their instructional practices, lays the foundation for future success for students. I think Quality Counts has come into our school and helped us to remember and to reflect on what it really means to be a K-4 teacher. And it has reminded us to focus on not only the academic, the ELA, the math, but also the social emotional growth of that child and where that child starts and to, to start at that level and work with that child. We've always known that education is not one size fits all and that's especially true for 4K. But what Quality Counts has done for us is it's allowed us to look through a different lens, not only with 4K, but K-12. The impact of Quality Counts on our school district has been tremendous in terms of quality and as a result of improving the quality through the technical assistance program with the Quality Counts model, we have seen tremendous gains in terms of our students being ready for kindergarten. 
Quarry Counts for me is very special because I've been here from the start of the kickoff for the county and I've seen it work in centers. I've been able to work with directors. I've been able to work with the Public School 4K and it is very viable for our county. It is very viable for anywhere in the state. I think the future of this impact has some significant implications for the state as a whole. This project shows us that focusing on the high quality learning environment and the evidence-based tools to do that and the technical assistance can get us further, faster than just singularly focusing on student results. Barbara Minoski is the Executive Director of Spartanburg First Steps and Georgia Miartan is the Executive Director of South Carolina First Steps. Tammy Compton is the Program Director of Quality Counts. Barbara and Tammy join us online today to celebrate with other members of their team. Will you all give us a wave? Congratulations on being a 2020 What Works South Carolina finalist. Congratulations to all three of our programs for making a huge difference for youth in South Carolina. We have truly loved learning about all three of you over the past few months and are just inspired by what you do. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Riley Institute's Deputy Director, Jackie Martin, who will share a little bit about our keynote speaker. Thank you, Kathy, and good afternoon, everyone. I should mention first that our speaker, John Simpkins, is a son of South Carolina. His mom and dad were both public school teachers. John likely suffered the various indignities that children do whose parents work in their schools, but in due time, he graduated from Lexington High School as a National Merit Scholar, went off to Harvard undergrad, then back down here to Duke Law. There he studied International and Comparative Law, Juris Doctorate, and Post Juris Doctor, a field of knowledge that he was soon to put to good use around the world. Interestingly, John is a member of a rather small club, that of seconds in command at the Riley Institute, the position I'm in now and which Kathy Stevens was in before me. Apparently, after John graduated from Duke, Secretary Riley convinced him to come back to South Carolina. John was the very first deputy at the Riley Institute, lo so many years ago. Happily, John remains with us as a senior associate. In lay terms, this means he is one of our go-to people for input on particularly challenging things we are thinking about. The emails generally begin, John, we are hoping to pick your brain about insert particularly challenging topic here. When we engage him in these consultations, John will sometimes tell us things we did not at all know we would hear. This is sometimes inconvenient but doesn't truth make us better and is thus desirable. I think that often when we introduce a speaker in a forum, the person we are introducing can be lost in our recounting of their bios, in the recitation of their degrees and the chronology of their work. The thing I always want to know is this, why is this person speaking to us today on this topic? The answer in John Simpkins case is the through line that defines his career. And that through line is systems work, systems. At the Riley Institute, we believe that are taking on a problem that has a systemic foundation and the issues we work with generally do, then you must take a systemic approach to beat it. That belief in the long game underlies everything we do. John's entire multifaceted career has been connected to systems change change focused on advancing equity, beginning at the Riley Institute, certainly with our core, core issues of public education and diversity, working in Africa, in Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, and South Africa to support those nations work to build their constitutions, constitutions, those essential documents within which a nation's system lives. Later serving in the Obama White House as general counsel to the United States Agency for International Development, helping to guide our investment in nations in ways that support the growth of resilient and democratic societies around the world. Leading the Aspen Institute's Global Leadership Network, which convenes our nation's brightest minds to work on a spectrum of pressing societal issues. And now bringing it back down south again, as the newly installed president and CEO of MDC, a very well-founded, well-respected 
an accomplished think tank with muddy boots based in Durham, but working across the South, certainly working here in South Carolina, bringing a systemic approach to bear on issues of equity and economic mobility to help individuals beat the odds, yes, but rather more to change the odds for everyone. Systems. John Simpkins is an activist, a teacher, a writer, a marathoner, a decent baker, and an accomplished and committed public servant. I think you'll enjoy these next few moments. John, I hand it off to you with our great thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Jackie, for that kind and thoughtful introduction. And congratulations to the three finalists and a belated Happy World Teachers Day to the educators joining us. Being with you all is, even if virtually, it feels like home to me, and it feels good to be home. But there can be no gain saying that we find ourselves in a generational moment. We remain in the grip of a pandemic that has forced our teachers to adapt to remote learning, hybrid models, and socially distanced in-person instruction to keep themselves, our students, and their families as safe as possible. The economic effects of COVID brutally express themselves in what has been described as a, a K-shaped recovery, where those who are doing well are actually gaining in wealth, and those who are doing poorly struggle even more. Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank, recently noted that the second greatest tragedy of the coronavirus after the loss of what soon will be a quarter of a million American lives, and we can compare that to a global death toll of 11,000 during Ebola, the second greatest tragedy may be that those who were just beginning to fully recover from the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009 now have been plunged anew into financial insecurity. The specter of evictions looms large and the toll on our students is significant. Just last spring, for example, 30% of the students in one South Carolina school district simply disappeared from their online classrooms because they lacked reliable internet service, hardware, or study space. Now we gather virtually during a hurricane season in which we've resorted to Greek letters for storms because we've run out of names. From the low country to the upstate, the effects of climate change are real and increasingly irreversible. Our generation's old responsibility to be stewards of our land faces perhaps its greatest challenge. And while we grapple with that which nature hath wrought, we also have entered a season of re-examining the human scourge that is our relationship with the controlled substance that is called racism. What some have called a racial reckoning, I've come to see as more of a moment of collective intervention. Race is the drug for which we constantly seek the ever stronger hit. Our nation has been addicted to race and racism, yet we ignore deflect and excuse as if speaking of the unwell uncle who sometimes has a few too many but always means well. Only this inelegant habit has cost lives, livelihoods, and untold amounts of the very productivity our economic system so craves. Raj Chetty, a Harvard economist, described the, wa the wages of racism in a 2017 paper in which he posited that Americans could have millions of lost Einsteins, children who, but for the circumstances of their birth, could produce the kinds of innovations we so handsomely reward. In this particular instance, Chetty examined the ranks of American inventors and found that children from families in the top 1% of the income distribution are 10 times as likely to have filed for a patent as those from below median income families. White people are three times as likely to have filed a patent as blacks. Yet Chetty went on to say, quote, there are very large gaps in innovation by income, race, and gender to be sure, 
But these gaps seem, don't seem to be about difference in ability to innovate. They seem to be directly tied to environment. Inventors, entrepreneurs, captains of technology and finance, all are likely to be from families of means. Think Elon Musk, think Bill Gates, but that doesn't have to be. So rather than focus on what we have gained, I think it's actually important to dwell on what we've lost. More than innovation or disruption is squandered when talent goes unrecognized. The very ability to engage in meaningful work, to lead a life of dignity, vanishes into a half-life, or for some, no life. By failing to create opportunity for all, we persist in the denial that is addiction in a country that Frederick Douglass described as, quote, being false to the past, false to the present, and unalterably binds herself to be false to the future. When Douglas uttered those words, he was but an early voice calling for rebirth. Abraham Lincoln declared at Gettysburg that, quote, this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Martin Luther King deployed the story of the addict Nicodemus to say that America must be born again. A nation that will keep people in slavery for 244 years, he said, will thingify them, and therefore they will exploit them and poor people generally. And yet, and yet, I take the words of Douglas, Lincoln, and King not simply as a rebuke, but as a calling to our better selves. Indeed, my vision of an America that is born again is deeply rooted in a South that has come alive to its true potential and by extension, a South Carolina where, to borrow from our state motto, all can carry hope in every, in every breath. At MDC, we have come to see this as the thriving South. That is a South where potential energy becomes kinetic and we unlock the talent and humanity in our midst. We need not be resigned to the falsity Douglas describes. We can be true to our past in all of its pain. We can be true to our present in building meaningful community and discovering all of our Einsteins. We can be true to our future by achieving the heretofore unrecognized clarity that comes with sobriety. Now, not tomorrow, not next year, or when the time is convenient. In my work, that means three things. First, we lead through equity and the recognition of the basic dignity of all. There is dignity in work. Therefore, all who labor should be compensated with a wage that allows them to provide for themselves and their loved ones. Second, we design or redesign systems for equitable outcomes. Sometimes system design requires systems change. And to expect a different outcome from the same approach, from the same systems is the very definition of madness. Third, we ground all our actions in rigorous data and demographic analysis and create compelling narratives to make the numbers come alive. These three features are essential for meaningful, durable change in organizations and in communities. So you may ask, where does education fit in all of this? And if you ask that question of someone who is a child of public school teachers like I am, the short answer is everywhere. Public education is a bedrock public good. The economic mobility Raj Chetty envisions and which MDC does as well for that matter, is impossible without comprehensive public educational opportunities. Your engagement with and support of our public education system fuels economic opportunity to be sure. But an education is about more than workforce training. A good education, an adequate education, equips one with the tools to be a discerning consumer of information, to develop healthy habits of heart and citizenship, 
and to be concerned for others in a way that is supportive and not simply pity or charity. It is only through education that we can be truly redeemed. I know this to be true to the core of my being. As Jackie mentioned, the through line of my professional life has been systems design and systems change. And that seems wholly appropriate as I am a product of a system, a public education system in South Carolina that was undergoing an immense amount of change in the 1970s and 80s. Born in 1970, I was a part of the first generation of truly integrated schools in Lexington, South Carolina, starting first grade just a few years after the last segregated classes had graduated there. My parents taught in schools they were not allowed to attend. I had the benefit of a tremendous gifted and talented program and later a governor's school summer program where I could stretch and put my talents to the test. Right now, as we speak, kids are engaging in project-based learning in Colleton County. They're building houses in the Technology Center in Lexington County. They're being granted the same opportunities. There are amazing things happening in public education around the state, as you've seen today. We just need more. We need to be greedy about our collective success because it benefits us all. We need to be consumed by our collective success, even addicted to it. That is an addiction to be enabled. W.E.B. Du Bois once said, as the South goes, so goes the nation. This generational moment is ours to invest, to build, to make real a thriving South. For all of you who work so hard in such trying circumstances to make that so, I am deeply, deeply grateful for your courage, your resilience, and your grace. I thank you, I stand with you, and I applaud your every success. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce one of my favorite people in the world, the former two-term South Carolina governor who supported and designed many of those wonderful programs from which I benefited. A former US Secretary of Education who has been hailed as one of the most decent men in politics. My mentor, my hero, and my friend, Dick Riley. Thank you so much, John. John and I have been friends for well over 20 years. I had a teaching fellowship at Harvard uh, after governor, and John was one of my students, and a good student he was. Uh, he was from Lexington, South Carolina, and he came here to this state and has done a lot of things with me over the years. And I'm so proud of John. I'm proud of his intellect and his dedication to what I would consider the common good. And thank you, John. I'm really pleased. Uh, for this chance to recognize and to really celebrate the positive things that are happening in education in our great state. Uh, I'm proud of all of you all who are watching today. I hope maybe next year we'll be together. Uh, but anyhow, we're making the best of things. Uh, your attendance here shows that you care about the children of South Carolina and their education. Uh, thank you for supporting our teachers, uh, supporting our schools, supporting our students, supporting our parents. Uh, this award carries the name of my late wife, Tunky. Uh, many of you knew her uh, back in the 80s, I'm sure. Uh, I know she too would be very proud uh, of all of you uh, to improve learning for our students in this state. So regardless of the challenging circumstances uh, that you face right now in 2020, uh, thank you so much for your continuing uh, support for quality schools. Uh, hearty congratulations to our three finalists. On the, on, for this year, they are APEC program, 
Montevue Magic and Quality Counts. Those three are the three finalists. I'm really proud of all of you, but those three are the three finalists. I'm grateful to you for your teams, for uh, the excellent work uh, that has been made uh, for such strong candidates this year. Uh, thanks to you and the generous support of our sponsors, each of these 2020 finalists will receive a beautiful crystal award uh, and a display and a cash award. Uh, our sponsors make this award uh, and the celebration that we're having today really possible. So now it's with great pleasure that I announce the winner of the 2020 Dick and Tucky Riley What Works South Carolina Award. The winner is Spartanburg First Steps Quality Counts. Uh, Jackie, if you'd hand me the award and congratulations to Quality Counts. Congratulations. <laughs> but especially the three finalists, uh, Montevue Magic, APEC, and Quality Counts. And again, I'm proud of, of every one of you participating in this very uh, important What Works award and celebration. On behalf of myself and for Don and Jackie, Kathy, and all the folks at the Riley Institute uh, and many others who have been involved, uh, I want all of you to know that we greatly appreciate the work that you do day in and day out. We will continue to work together for the good of all South Carolina's children. And I encourage everyone to spread the word about APEC, about Montevue Magic, and about Quality Counts. These are just three examples of the good work being done across the state. We want our legislators, our friends, our colleagues, and our families to know that there's a lot of good happening right here in South Carolina education. Public education, and you all agree with me on that, I know, or you wouldn't be here, is critical to our democracy. And it takes all of us working together to keep it strong. Thank you for all that you're doing. You're doing your part, and I thank you for that. Hope to see you next year in the What Works South Carolina 2021, hopefully again in present. Uh, meanwhile, please keep up the good work. Stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and distance socially, keeping yourself from others. I thank you very much, and again, congratulations to the winners.